What if I told you the banking industry has waged war on the people for years and they've won without us noticing? You might wonder what this one thing is and I'll go one step further and explain why this impacts your freedom. An article on This Is Money, critics say that NatWeft's move apparently designed to clamp down on fraud and financial crime will push us all ever nearer to a cashless society. But from the middle of next month, it has told customers that they will have the right to apply daily or annual limits on cash deposits and withdrawals. These limits, it said, are justified because protecting our customers from the risk of fraud and financial crime is important to us. The banks are acting as if they are making these changes in our interest for our protection to prevent fraud when in reality what they're doing is they're restricting the amount of freedom that you now have natwef's move is another nail in the coffin of the high street branch post office limit daily withdrawals for bank customers using its services to 300 pounds the equivalent limit for deposits is three thousand pounds for personal bank customers with an annual cap of ten thousand pounds i love the distinction in difference here yet yeah, look it's okay you can deposit up to ten thousand pounds in cash or happily take the money from you but no no you can't have it back why you're not allowed the freedom of having your money back imagine a story here right and you're lending money to your mate i've given you in the past 100 quid right i'd like to take 50 quid back from you right and your mate just goes no i'm not going to do that you can withdraw five pounds from me instead you'd get very annoyed and frustrated at your friend for doing something so ridiculous as that and yet the banks can do this and we sat here all like sheep there's a good comment here actually and i've seen this and it says they need to make contingency plans for when their systems crash if we can't make or receive deposits electronically they should be prepared to pay the costs or losses we incur as they are managing our money an article on the financial times banks have accelerated closing branches across the country prompting concerns that customers will be left without access to physical money people shouldn't have to trek for hours to withdraw a tenant to put in someone's birthday card nor should businesses have to travel large distances to deposit cash takings the banks are closing their branches they're also reducing the number of atms so overall they're going to see increased levels of profits a larger proportion of transactions are going to be digitally and going through their systems to which they take fees almost 1100 closures has been announced this year to that nearly 6000 bank branches have been closed since january 2015 which is only only leaving 4,000. There's 4,000 bank branches left in the UK. And if you haven't thought already by now that the banks have won, well, this shows it. They'll be able to gather more data from consumer spending because more of it will be online via a debit card. That said, now that they can see transactions via a debit card, they can link debit cards to vehicle numbers or phone numbers, etc. They can effectively track you and map you out as a consumer. They can identify exactly everything you've purchased. They can identify exactly what you own and therefore will completely ruin any idea of privacy that you think that you might have. There is one business that gives me a little bit of hope and that is the post office and what they're doing is they're creating a community hub making it possible for customers to see a banking representative on each day of the week. When we think about it is the lack of communications that you're able to have with the bank. We've heard a lot online about people's accounts being frozen. The bank at any moment can willfully stop you from accessing the money that's yours in their account because they can say oh we have suspicions of fraud we've now frozen your account for 10 days well there's a huge concern there because you don't have access to money and you may desperately need it and this is what i follow personally of having credit cards with two different providers that are completely different to the bank accounts you hold also having multiple bank accounts with different varying amounts of money in them if one bank account has been frozen or you can access the money on another another underrated thing about credit cards is if you're building up reward points and you've been spending on this for a while and suddenly oh no your credit card's been frozen but you've still got the reward points which you can transfer so even if it means redeeming gift cards it means you can survive in a pinch and this is why it's so important that you have an emergency fund that is not in your main bank account because if your main bank account gets frozen well you can't access that emergency fund anymore can you somewhere where you're not even going to look or that you don't even often use probably is a really good idea because it means one you're not tempted to look into it and withdraw the money and two if shit does hit the fan well hey look you've got money from this bank you can survive for the next few weeks whilst they're investigating your account for any suspicious activity admittedly there is one advantage from all of this and we as a consumer do get more convenience i mean i will admit it's a lot easier to be sending bank transfers and paying for things online than it is to do it in cash i mean quite frankly it's a bit of a pain these days to withdraw money from atms because most of the time the atms are out of service and i'm unable to access cash anyway but it's convenient it's something we really want to value over that of our freedom and our privacy i'm not so sure there is another problem which means most of us aren't going to get state pension if you'd like to learn why then click the video right here